I'm on a mission to cut all of the big tech companies, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and Apple, out of my life. This week, I'm taking on Google. Google has been catching some serious heat lately for its desire to suck up as much data from people as possible, most notably for capturing location data in unexpected ways, practices that Google has abandoned after being exposed. Still, I was apprehensive about the Google block because the company is basically an extension of my brain. Google Calendar tells me what I need to do on any given day, including get this haircut. I use Gmail for both work and personal email. Google Docs is the home of my story drafts, half-finished zombie novel, and a running tally of my finances. You want some milk right now? And of course, there's that comforting white bar that has all the answers. Seriously, I don't understand how people raise children in a time before Google. Hey, where are you going? Despite all that, I am pleased to say that cutting Google out of my life took just a few painful hours. I migrated my browser bookmarks over to Firefox. Firefox welcomes me with the message, it shouldn't be that hard to own your life online, referring to its recent decision to block ads and third-party trackers by default. Hell yeah, I'm liking this already. I changed the default search engine on Firefox and my iPhone from Google to privacy respective DuckDuckGo. I download Apple Maps and the MapQuest app to my phone. I decide to give Apple's calendar app a whirl. I created new email addresses on ProtonMail and RiseUp.net. It actually felt wonderful to start fresh. My devices have already pinged Google servers almost as much as they pinged Facebook servers all of last week, and it's only been a few hours. The infinite space offered by the tech giants has made us all digital hoarders with data stacked up in various places that we're loath to throw away, even though we haven't used it in forever. Until last year, Google was scanning the content of those emails to place targeted ads. While I can choose not to use Google products, that doesn't mean Google won't still try to collect my data or make money off of me by displaying ads. That's why the blocker Druv has built for me is so crucial. By blocking Google's IP addresses and keeping the company's servers from communicating with my devices, it will hopefully block Google's trackers and ad networks from seeing me, for now. But it'll be a lot harder to avoid Google's gaze in the near future when its sister company, Sidewalk Labs, starts doing IRL data collection in our cities. On the first morning of the block, I realize I have quite a few tabs open in Firefox that are trying to ping Google servers. Airbnb can't load its photos without Google's help. NewYorkTimes.com is desperately trying to load Google Analytics, Google Pay, Google News, Google Ads, and a double-click tracker. By 10 a.m., I've already pinged Google servers 10,000 times. Throughout the week, almost every site I try to open loads incredibly slowly often because it uses Google Fonts, which are downloaded from Google servers and then cached in the browser. It reminded me of when I first got on the internet in the 90s, the kind of like messages in the bottom left-hand corner saying like trying to connect to Google API, trying to pull down Google Fonts, and trying to connect to Google Analytics. It was like I felt the, the web of Google all over the internet all week. Yeah, I feel, I, I feel like that's kind of a revelation is how many sites rely on Google for their, yeah, for their fonts or for their CSS. Is any actual data being sent? It'll definitely send your IP address and also what font that you're trying to, what like resource it's trying to grab. It saves it temporarily and it only really uses it for debugging. So uh, in the realm of things that Google collects, I feel like this is not them at their most evil. <laughs> The tech giants have helped create a faster, more efficient internet infrastructure, but one that is littered with their trackers and ads. Blocking Google causes some serious workflow problems for me. For example, we use Kinja.com to publish blogs here at Gizmodo Media Group, and Kinja offers just three login options, Facebook, Twitter, or Google. I use Google, so I'm locked out of the blogs for a week. I've been using Dropbox to send videos about my tech blockade to our video producer, Myra. But when I go to Dropbox, I discover I can't sign in. Dhruv tells me they're using some kind of invisible CAPTCHA that relies on Google's API. On the last day of the block, I needed to head downtown for a meeting. I left with enough time to get there via Uber, but when I opened the app, it wouldn't work. Same thing with Lyft. They're both dependent on Google Maps. 
which means that I couldn't enter my destination with my blocker. So I had to take the bus and wound up late to the meeting. So yeah, these are the, the tolls of a life without Google. Google is a real giant when it comes to maps. Even its mortal enemy, Yelp, uses it to render maps on Yelp.com. <laughs> I love it that they say that like that's a thing. So I'm using the MapQuest app. Um, I was pleased to discover that MapQuest, MapQuest still exists. And uh, it's funny, the route it's given me does not seem to have taken into account traffic at all. Google realized early on that maps would be a huge business and everyone else is still trying to catch up with them. Alternatives exist for many of the services Google offers, but they seem to raise an eyebrow with people. And even though everything I used this week was free, some services wouldn't be if I became a heavy user. Making the switch to decentralized, privacy-focused companies means you might actually have to pay because they're not monetizing your data. Three weeks in, the tech blockade, while seriously inconvenient at times, has been good for me. Because I couldn't access services and apps for weeks at a time, it's broken me of some bad habits and made me put my phone aside at night. I thought there'd be something important waiting for me in my Gmail, which I hadn't been able to check for a week. I discovered over 100 new emails in my personal email and over 200 new emails in my work email. It was all junk. I deleted it. Next up, Microsoft. 